Hello guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to Rule of Two Review. Today, we're gonna talk about the E3 conference, so let's just get into this. So, today is Thursday, June 15th, which means, sadly, it is the final day of E3 for 2017. And I gotta tell you, it's been pretty fantastic. Maybe a lot of people might not agree with this, but I have absolutely loved E3 this year. I think this is one of the overall strongest years I've ever seen. And I will probably, you know, be discussing that on another video in the next couple of days, really summarizing my whole feeling about all of the show, all of the conferences, everyone's presentations, and all of the crazy good games that we saw this year. But as far as this video, and what I wanted to touch on really quickly for you guys, is how the presentation from all of the conferences and Nintendo Spotlight actually came across this year. I think one of the biggest of the many takeaways I had from this year's E3 was how everyone's presentation felt a little bit different. Something about the conferences had a different feel, a different vibe, a different pace for sure. That's probably the main thing. And as the conferences in the first couple of days of E3 rolled on, I started to realize that this was happening. And I was, of course, trying to figure out in my brain, is this a good thing? Do I like this? Is this a bad thing? And, you know, just like most things of this nature, there's some good and bad to it. But the ultimate concept that I'm getting at here is what I feel like I noticed with most of the conferences most of the time this year was how quickly they moved and how rapid fire, rapid succession, all of the game reveals and the announcements and the trailers were. And I have to say that overall, I feel like it is a very good thing. Now, admittedly, there were some times or some conferences that didn't really do that. EA is the big standout. They probably had what felt like the most traditional air quotes around the word traditional, just in a sense of what uh, press conferences had really been and felt like leading up to this year, they had what felt like the most traditional kind of conference, where they had quite a bit of speaking and corporate guys and developers and people coming up on stage between games and announcements and reveals and stuff to talk about things as they showed it on stage and did the live demos with someone talking into a microphone on stage. And that was like entirely their conference. And right behind them, Ubisoft also pretty much did the same thing as well. And those are the ones that really, really jump out to me where they stuck a little bit more to the tried and true press conference that we've been accustomed to the last, what, decade and a half, 20 years probably. And I certainly liked elements of those. I actually thought Ubisoft's conference was great overall, really, really solid. I gave it like an A minus or something. Um, and EA's, I actually did not think that was a really good conference for quite a few reasons, although it did have one of my absolute top two or three, or maybe even favorite game of the show. Well, probably not favorite, but man, it's right up there with Battlefront 2, but that's a different story because they, they literally took a separate half hour section of their conference to dedicate just to that game and a whole live demo and a trailer and information. So that is, was almost like its own conference away from all the other kind of garbage that EA was doing, and I don't hate EA, so I'm not really coming at it from that angle. But aside from those two conferences, everyone else had shows that were mostly about a lot of games over and over and over again. Just game after game after game, trailer after trailer after trailer, without a whole lot of fluff or talking, you know, or presentations from people for these companies in between, and I thought it was really great. When you look at Bethesda's conference, another one that I thought was really just an average conference overall, but still, they did this. They literally put together a package that's just game after game after game, and uh, Sony and Nintendo, we know that's basically what they did. Very little talking, all game trailers. Microsoft is a unique one in the sense that they did start off in the traditional sense where they had a couple of people come on stage to talk about myriad different things the xbox one x the specs the forza stuff showing off the car things like that they did have people do that and they had one or two games where someone did come on stage to talk that one is it was it was that the battleborn game where the guy came and did like the the kind of like sports announcer kind of like oh and then he does a shot to the left and this guy's running around the corner he's gonna flank him to the right and then poop happens and oh my gosh like i think i think that happened for that game and other than that, no one else came on stage. And it was literally just game, 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 game. You know, Phil Spencer did come on one time, sorry, uh, to introduce like a reel of games, which became, you know, some of those Japanese games like Dragon Ball and that Black Desert game, which someone told me is a Korean developed, Korean team developed game, not a Japanese uh, developed game. I'm not 100% sure, but um, you know, all these other things, Code Vein was shown. Like, really, Microsoft, after that first 20 minutes, just did the exact same thing Sony and Nintendo did. Just so many games, non-stop, very little fluff. And when you look at Sony, literally, Sean Layden comes out, blah, 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 and then just game trailers until the very end, and that's it. It was really kind of weird, 
And Nintendo did the same thing with just Reggie at the beginning and then the, the Pokemon dudes in the middle. And then, and then it went to the end and then it was over. And it was just game trailers from all of these companies. And like, there are some bad, there are some bad sides to that. Like I said, um, for Microsoft, it was the fact that the 20 minutes in the beginning I thought was actually kind of boring and lame. And then it got freaking awesome once they went into the game trailers and the game demos. With Sony, I love the fact that they had so many games and so little BS in between the games. And it was really just trailer after trailer and gameplay. But Sony's specifically just felt a little bit more awkward to me because they didn't have any of that stuff in between. Uh, or any of that stuff, sorry, that bridges the gap between we have a live audience and we're showing off game trailers. And Bethesda's was the same way. Bethesda's was fairly disappointing, although they had some really kick-ass games at the end. It still was, was kind of just disappointing and weird. Nintendo has kind of been perfecting this for so long that they absolutely had the leg up. And I promise you guys, it is not just my, you know, big fanship of Nintendo speaking here. I mean, they really had the most concise and well put together package and it felt appropriate, it felt right, and it felt normal because we've been seeing Nintendo do this and refine this for quite a long time, after the last few years or so. So, really, everyone was all over the board in terms of how the quality was, but I couldn't help but notice, and then of course want to bring up to you guys, that with E3 2017, everyone was just like, let's talk as little as possible, and let's just do a bunch of games and trailers and demos. So I have to say that even though there were some awkward moments and some weirdness with how some of the companies that weren't Nintendo treated this format, and it's also, can we acknowledge how strange it is that it seems like Everyone except for EA and also kind of Ubisoft was like on the same page here Like did they all get together and be like, okay, let's all do this We'll take our games and we'll just throw them together and a bunch of trailers just back to back And that's what we're gonna do like everyone was like synchronized watches and go um, It's just so weird and what a weird coincidence that that happened that way But beyond that even though there were some awkwardness uh, awkward moments and some weirdness with it all Overall, I loved it because it really became let's just show people games Let's show the audience in the room the games Let's show the gamers at home the games and the industry all these games and all these demos and all these things we're doing and like so many times in the past some of the biggest complaints lobbied against conferences or E3 has been how little games might even be shown sometimes and everyone has been guilty of that from Nintendo to Sony to Microsoft to everyone has been guilty of that at different times for sure and this year it's like nope that's not the case everyone had a bunch of stuff to show and I feel like what we're seeing is the beginning of bridging the gap between the traditionalized press conference and maybe even not doing that? Are we maybe seeing the signs of even the Sonys and Microsofts jumping on board with what I personally believe Nintendo started a few years ago and trying to eventually just move to not even doing a live thing? And Sony's is the best example, and I discussed this on my recap video of their show, which again, I did really like. I gave them a B plus. I liked their show a lot. Um, but th there was no reason, same with Bethesda, by the way, Sony and Bethesda, no reason to have people in that room. Not at all, because they were never truly addressed by the hosts and the people who represent these companies on stage like we're used to at an E3 conference. I mean, if Sony's show specifically had just a filmed sort of uh, presentation from Sean Layden, everything he said on stage in that first three or four minutes before the game trailer started, if he was filmed in the same format that we saw Reggie start the spotlight, and then Sony's thing was just all of those game trailers until Sean Layden came back on camera at the very end, it would have been Sony's equivalent of a Nintendo Direct, of an E3 spotlight. It was exactly that, but instead, they just put it on a big projector in an auditorium and had Sean Layden come on stage two times. And it's, I, my, my thinking is like, Sony, why? How much did that cost you? How much time did you have to prepare to get all this, the, the really cool stage and the lighting and that, and that musical group in the beginning all together to do that? And like, Nintendo realized if we're gonna present stuff this way, why do it in person? Like, let's just do it this way. We put it out on the internet and people love it and it costs us way less. And the messaging gets right out to the fans the right way in the most efficient and fun way possible. And, you know, yes, Sony didn't do that and I'm questioning that, but my thinking is maybe they're starting to consider doing that. Maybe over the course of the next two or three E3s, heck, maybe even next year, they end up doing that. What if all of a sudden Sony is like, yeah, we're not going to have a 
a live press conference, but we will release a presentation package at this time on the internet at during this day at E3. Like, maybe they're looking at doing that. And obviously, Bethesda, because Bethesda had a lot of humor and personality to their package, very much like a Nintendo Direct. I mean, different kind of humor and presentation, but, but the way, the format, and just the concept of what they did is exactly what Nintendo Directs and the E3 Directs have been in the past. So, like, these are companies that personally this year, this is just my analy um, analysis, maybe you guys disagree, but I saw them starting to take steps towards what I think Nintendo did, which means Nintendo truly might have been a trailblazer way back in 2013 when they decided for the first time ever not to come on stage and instead just put an E3 Direct out and then the digital events and all these things we've seen since. They really might have been that trendsetter. And it's it's too early to say for sure, maybe, to, maybe this year was a fluke and maybe this never happens again and... It's going to be back to normal next year. Everyone has long conferences that are sometimes boring and awkward, sometimes have some great games. Nintendo will do their digital thing however they present in the future, and we're all back to normal. But I kind of don't think so. I feel like we're going to start to see something like this happen. I mean, I maybe, this is my final point, maybe the big companies like Sony and Microsoft and whatnot and EA would be too afraid to do what Nintendo did and bypass the press and not want to get the media in a big room and treat them with all these fancy gifts and like, you know, special swag packages that are probably sitting on everyone's chair when you walk in and they get all these cool whatever. You know, the media and the press is so used to that because they're just big high dollar corporate companies and maybe Sony and Microsoft, at least right now, are not yet ready to shun them the way maybe Nintendo, quote unquote, shunned them by leaving the press conference. This is a guess as someone who doesn't work in the industry and truly understand if that's how it would be perceived, but I have to think that out loud because I have thought that. Um, but I, I just, you know, even if that's the reason, I still think they might consider doing it. Maybe they've seen the effect. Wow, Nintendo saves so much money. Nintendo really makes their gamers happy when they do well with these packages, and they get messages out, and they're bypassing so much other crap in the industry. I mean, really, maybe they're seeing that. So, I don't know. That's my theory. That's my, that's my thinking. That's one of my biggest takeaways from the show this year, here on the final day of E3 2017. And I definitely want to hear... Your guys' opinions and thoughts on this idea. Does this make sense to you? Do you agree with me? Did you maybe see the same thing that I did as we watched the conferences? Or maybe did you just not take this away from it and you think, like I said a couple minutes ago, maybe it will just be back to normal next year and this year was a fluke. Very curious to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on it. And that's it. So, of course, thanks for tuning in, guys. That's it for now. I have uh, a couple more E3-related videos over the next few days. But obviously, e 3 is done. It's been a great year so far. Um, but I will address E3 stuff in the next couple of videos still. So, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. This is Rob Overlook to Review, and I will catch you guys next time on another video.